Hi, I'm Jason O'Dell, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a hybrid HDR image. And hybrid HDRs are something that you can do if you can use any program that lets you paint with layers. And essentially, we want to use this technique when you've got two different parts of the scene. So here's a scene where I've got this old, rusty uh, Studebaker, this car in a field. And I can sort of tone map this in one of two ways with, with my tone mapping HDR programs. I can make it very stylized, and that's going to make really interesting textures in the car. But it's going to do that at the expense of making the sky and the background look very strange. Alternatively, I could use a natural HDR method and get a nice clean sky, but I wouldn't have the extreme textures. I'd have to use other filters or other plugins to try to get the textures in the car. So what we're going to try to do is combine both of those techniques in Photoshop layers to make a hybrid. So I'm going to open these images from Bridge into HDR Effects Pro in this case for Photoshop. And what I want to do is choose to open this as a smart object. So I'm going to check the smart object box. I'm going to choose alignment and all my other methods and click OK. Once I get into HDR Effects Pro's interface, I'm going to go ahead and tone map the image. So let me start with the very stylized image. I'm going to just choose one of my presets from the Photographer's Guide to HDR Effects Pro. Oh, let's choose a really grungy one like Artistic Interiors 3. Very grungy, maybe even two. Slightly different looks. Okay, I've got a very stylized look. So I'm going to just modify this now. Let's change the method strength to grainy there we go we got some serious texture going on in there you can see that and we've got a lot of structure I'm just gonna back off the saturation a little bit and dial in a little warmth remember I'm doing this predominantly looking at the car I'm gonna use a control point to go ahead and just modify the exposure a little bit because I want the tires to be dark and maybe I want the door to be a little bit brighter just a little bit okay and you can do that to your image I'm not really worrying about the sky but you can see how stylized that look and maybe that's what you want maybe it's not what you want so we'll start off with this with this idea that we're gonna tone map this image a second time so I'm gonna click OK that's gonna bring me back to Photoshop and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our layers here you can see that we made a layer and it's got the smart filter HDR effects pro applied and there's my very grungy aggressive tone mapping what I need to do now is make a copy a duplicate of this layer so I'm gonna right click on the layer and choose duplicate layer and click OK and it's gonna do that it takes a few moments to create that layer but I'm getting a, a, an exact duplicate with HDR effects Pro applied again using the same settings. Now I'm going to double click HDR effects Pro from the top layer and it reloads here into the window and everything is the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my control points and then I'm going to choose a very neutral setting. So let me choose this landscape preset that we've got okay now you see I've got a very natural sky and I'm just going to make some minor adjustments to the tree I'm gonna diminish the exposure and saturation a little bit because I don't like this tree branch being quite so distracting and I'm gonna diminish the contrast and exposure and saturation in the telephone pole because again I just I'm trying to minimize it but the car it looks plain it's not very textured my sky looks great so now I click OK again and I'm once again returned to Photoshop here we are back in Photoshop and now you can see I've got the two layers at this point if you wanted to you could save this 32-bit image with the smart filters all applied so you'd have a master that you could come back and retone map I'm not gonna do that right now the next step 
is going to be to rasterize both of these layers. So I'm going to rasterize the top layer and rasterize the bottom layer. So now I've got the two layers. They're both visible. You can see there's my grungy layer. I'm going to call this layer grunge and I'm going to call the top layer clean just so I can keep keep track. Now what I want to do is I'm going to convert this into 16-bit mode. So I'm going to go up to image mode 16 bits per channel. You can see we're in 32 bits per channel right now. That's HDR land. So we're going to move back to 16 bits and we're going to get this warning dialog. Do you want to merge the layers? No, I do not want to merge the layers. I just want to convert them both. Okay, so now we're in 16-bit mode. That's step one. We've got the two different tone maps combined as layers into Photoshop. And if you don't have smart objects, if you're not using CS5, for example, if you just want to use HDRFX Pro or Photomatix, whatever you might be using, just tone map your image, save two TIFFs. As long as they're aligned the same way, you'll get two TIFF files that you can bring into Photoshop or Elements, whatever you have, and then do the following steps uh, within that editor. What I need to do is add a layer mask to my clean layer. So I'm going to go up to clean, select it, click the layer mask button, and there it is. And now I want to make sure that my palette is set to black and white, and I'm going to have the foreground color set to black. I'm going to choose a nice soft brush, and I'm going to set the opacity to, oh, 50% or so. We're going to build up this effect. So as long as I've got my layer mask selected, we're now going to erase the top layer in the places we want the grungy parts to show through. So let me go ahead and just start doing that. And as I paint this in, you can see my effect getting applied. Now because I'm at 50% opacity, I'm not getting the full look right away. But that helps me keep the edges from looking strange when I paint them. So I'm just building up the underneath layer, the underlying grungy layer, as much as I want to around the car. And I'm leaving everything else alone. Get this headlight. Let's get that hood ornament. Okay. So now we have our tone mapped car and we have our clean background. If you want to add any further effects to this, what I would recommend would be to copy both of these layers, duplicate them, click OK, and then merge the two top layers. Do you have something this is your merge layer now that you could add additional filter effects to if you wanted to while preserving the bottom two layers if you wanted to go back. You could save a copy of this file. If you do save this file, remember this one's in 16-bit mode, so give it a different file name because otherwise you'll overwrite the previous file um, and you'll lose your master. So just some tips and tricks to do. This is a hybrid HDR. We've got a nice clean background but a very stylized, tone-mapped car in this field. It can work for a variety of applications. It works really well.